Hello, I'm Donna Samuels, and I'm in visitor experience and interpretation at the Rubin Museum of Art in Chelsea, Manhattan. Our museum predominantly covers arts and artifacts from the Himalayan regions, where we explore the cultures and ideas you find in Central Asia. During these times, we decided to release a video every day for five days a week where we get to introduce maybe new practices or words of wisdom to help us all get through these very unusual times we're finding ourselves in. For today, we're gonna focus on the concept of solitude. Now, some of us are kind of self-quarantining in a global scale in different ways. Some of us are by ourselves. Some of us are with family and loved ones and young children. And a lot of us are finding it hard to not have that everyday physical social interactions that we're used to. But it is still important for us to find the positive nature of having all this time to ourselves and really reflect on who we are and what that means. So for today, to really dive deep in that positive nature, we're going to start by looking and exploring an artifact that is of the Bodhisattva of Wisdom, Manjushri. Here seen in this 19th century metal sculpture from Tibet, Manjushri is fully seated on a double lotus throne. Elegantly draped in royal robes, he has four arms and holds an item in relation to wisdom in each hand. One pair of arms holds a book and a large flaming sword. The book is the Prashna Paramita Sutra, or the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra. The sword is a symbol for wisdom and how it cuts through the clouds of ignorance. The other pair of arms holds a bow and arrow, and they are symbols of penetrating wisdom. Wisdom and compassion are usually depicted together in union in various symbols throughout Buddhist art because both are important in the journey to enlightenment. And in these moments of solitude, we have the opportunity to deepen our understanding of what that wisdom entails. And now our host, Venerable Tenzin Priyadarshi, will lead us in a short meditation to further contemplate the positive aspects of solitude. My name is Tenzin Priyadarshi. I'm a student of Buddha Dharma. I run the Dalai Lama Center for Ethics and Transformative Values at MIT. Today, we'll focus on the emanation of wisdom, Bodhisattva Manjushri, who's known by many names in Buddhist tradition, Kumarabhut, the youthful one, or Manju Gosha, the one whose voice is melodious. And Manjushri is often depicted uh, with his signature blazing sword of wisdom with the sense that it is the sword that cuts through all confusions. And it's an image that is embedded in our practice from very early on. I remember receiving teachings on Manjushri in my early childhood and the practice associated with it. There are several forms of practice, and I want to just leave uh, you with one of them. It's a simple practice of simply looking at the image of Manjushri, contemplating the image of Manjushri. And by contemplation, it does not mean to simply look at the image with veneration or with reverence. By contemplation, it means that as I gaze at the image, I contemplate the qualities that that image personifies. And so in the case of Manjushri, what, I, what one is contemplating is what, the aspiration to overcome ignorance and attachment. Ignorance and attachment in its many forms, in its uh, uh, innumerable forms almost, that prevents us from seeing our true nature. It chains us to the aspects of anxiety, to this aspects of uh, jealousy that it chains us to 
a world that is also fabricated. Fabricated in the sense that only our false sense of ego is able to relate to it. And even that ego is frail, fragile, uh, in a sense of discomfort. So the practice is something that many people in Buddhist countries do it at a very early age. And it's the mantra of Manjushri. Om Ara Patsana Dhi. And it's the last seed syllable, Dhi. Uh, sometimes in English, simply written as Dhi. Dhi. The idea that Dhi is like this flame that burns away ignorance. And so this idea that, that we sit in meditation, contemplating the image, and simply reciting the mantra, Om Arapatsana Dhi, or simply reciting even the seed syllable Dhi again and again, with the sense that there's this deep aspiration that I might overcome all ignorance and attachment. Why? Because I wish to taste enlightenment. Why? Because I wish to simply free myself from all chains of worldly existence. But the desire to seek freedom is just not mine or mine alone, but that it is driven by the sense of altruism, that it is driven by the sense of compassion, that like a bodhisattva, I shall come back again and again and help others to attain a similar path of enlightenment sitting quietly, contemplating, gazing at the image of Manjushri, and simply reciting either Om Arapatsana Dhi, or simply the seed syllable Dhi. And just, if you take a deep breath, visualizing yourself, seated with Manjushri, and simply saying Om Arapatsana Dhi, and then repeating with the exhalation, the seed syllable D, as much as you can. Oh, Marcos, not did it, 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 did